Every day is different. Uh, we have multiple overdoses. I think we've had five of them this month already. A couple of suicides, which was due to drug overdoses. It's a job that I think that you got to have, I don't know, the heart for. Um, there's days that I can be tender and loving, and then there's other days when you when you want to be hard. You, you want to make sure that they're put behind bars. And children, we get lots of those. I've been asked how I do it. I said, I got to remind you of one thing. When that baby is dead and the environment is bad, I'll do my darndest. A cold case to me, and of course everybody's definition may differ, means that there are no active leads, nothing that is being pursued, and nobody is an official, quote, suspect, unquote. That is different from having a case in which you're just building up facts before you make your move. There's nothing like a fresh autopsy, and I try as much as possible to preserve representative portions of tissues that I can go back to later on for a microscopic examination or other studies. And sometimes, if I can, without um, compromising uh, the appearance of the body uh, or so on, I will cut out a stab wound or a, knife or a gunshot wound so that I can revisit that if necessary uh, down the road months or years later. When we get there, if the RNI unit is not there, if they do not, if it's exterior of the house, we don't have to wait for any uh, subpoenas or search warrants or anything. There's a whole process that takes a good two hours. Uh, you have to get, gather the blood splatters from different areas of the house. If it says shotgun blast, you have splatters. You have to bag the hands until we get to autopsy to make sure there's no residue from a gunshot that maybe this person had a gun and was shooting somebody else and this person shot him back. Uh, <clears throat> clothing, when we get to autopsy, everything is left on the body. The body is not touched. That body then goes to autopsy. When we get there, state police take DNA. Now DNA can be a hundred thousand different things. Uh, you can get DNA out of a pair of gloves. Okay, I'm going to kill you. I got a pair of rubber gloves on. You're not going to get my fingerprints. Well, you know, idiot, you know, it's DNA inside those rubber gloves. You have to do scraping on the body, fingernails, under the fingernails, hairs, pubic hairs, blood, and then the tissue. <clears throat> uh, sometimes they take swabs from the bottom of the shoe. It's 410 for the right. Probably in the majority of cases involving stab wounds and gunshot wounds, they are not excised and saved. They are not. So therefore, you don't have them. And either you go back later on, and if the body's decomposed, then you may not be able to see them at all, or make the kinds of determinations that would be important, like in a gunshot wound, what was the distance from which the shot was fired, and a stab wound, what was the direction. It depends again on how long the person's been dead, how old the tissues are, how long the body uh, has been there and decomposed. When those cold cases come up that we're still working on them, our power is to treat it as if it was never solved and we just reopen it, get the witnesses at the new ones. So there's a critical thing, new people coming with new stories. And that's one of the tools, but we really need the help of the professionals at interrogation. If you have materials available, you can do DNA testing. You may have to dig up the body to get some biological materials. Obviously, if a body's been cremated, then by definition, you have nothing to work with. Not every cold case evolves upon investigation of the body. Many cold cases are not related to forensic science. Many cold cases are related to somebody just coming forward with information, and they themselves confessing. When we have these tragedies, 
the little that we can do is give a little bit of peace of mind to the families. And, and if we can do that, sometimes that is the most that we can do.